Whitfield State School acknowledges the traditional custodians of the lands from across Queensland and pay our respects to the elders past, present and emerging, for they hold the memories, the traditions, the culture and hopes of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people across the state. Thank you for joining us today for our very special Anzac Day Commemoration Virtual Assembly. We would like to give a special thanks to Mr Thompson and Mrs Ryan for speaking today. We are here today to honour all Australians that have served our country during war and conflict. 105 years ago, Anzacs landed on the shore of Gallipoli and since then, the 25th of April has been known as Anzac Day. All Australians and New Zealanders take time to remember those who have served and honour the sacrifices they have made. The term ANZAC stands for Australian and New Zealand Army Corps, and the men and that served in the corp that corps came to be known as ANZACs. In 1915, the ANZACs, along with the British, Indian and French soldiers, were sent to serve on the Gallipoli Peninsula in Turkey. These ANZACs came from all types of backgrounds and all over the country. There were many serving members from throughout Queensland, including Cairns. They wore the same uniform and shared the same experiences of war. This story of the Anzacs is one that unites all Australians. There are many ways that we can honour those that have served in Australia's armed forces. We can watch our school service like the one today and we can also honour their service by wearing poppies or a sprig of rosemary to symbolise remembrance. This year on Anzac Day we are commemorating in a special way. At 6am on the 25th of April, people from all over the country will be standing on their driveways as a silent salute to the Anzacs. There are many customs and traditions that we share during our Anzac service. One such tradition is the last post and the rows. In military tradition, the last post is a bugle call that signified the end of the day. It was also sounded at military funerals to signify the final rest. Following the last post is a minute of silence to take time and pay respect. At the end of the minute silence, you will hear the rows, which, indicate, which indicated the start of the, the soldier's day. I would now like to ask Mr. Thompson to give the commemorative address. Thank you. Can I begin by thanking our student leaders and the staff who have helped put together this ANZAC assembly under these difficult circumstances. Students, as has been said, we are not only marking the 105th anniversary of the ANZAC landing at Gallipoli, but also we are honouring the memory of those men and women who have, through many conflicts over many years, risked and sacrificed their lives in the service of our country. For me, the story of Anzac is not about glorifying death nor injury, but about the bravery and sacrifice of normal, everyday people who put aside family, the pursuit of happiness and wealth to confront the dangers that threaten their communities. There is something very Australian in coming together for a cause, something we always try to reinforce at our school, thinking of others. It is part of our natural disposition to stick together in adversity. It is a simple, comradely gesture which flows from the deeper springs of our national character. To me, being Australian means believing in the right to freedom and a fair go. Rights which the men and women we honour today and through different activities across the country have sacrificed greatly to ensure that we receive. We must always remember and defend these beliefs and the sacrifices which ensured them. To do so honours these gifts and cherishes their, cherishes their memory. I encourage everyone to think about what has been said today and if at all possible that you show your support through whatever activities will be available. Thank you very much. Thank you Mr Thompson for your meaningful address. We would now invite Mrs Ryan to read the story, Here They Come. Hello everybody. Welcome to our Whitfield State School community as this year we share our thoughts on Anzac Day. Anzac Day is a time when we do a lot of thinking and remembering and it's interesting in our story today our title is Here They Come, A Day to Remember. Anzac Day is a time to think and remember those brave men and women 
who travel to distant shores to work and fight so that we can have a very peaceful country to live in today. We live in a wonderful country, the country of Australia, and much of that peace has been afforded to us by brave men and women. Let's read the story today. As you look at the story, see if you can see some of the olden day pictures and some of the modern day pictures, because in this story, our characters are remembering. My title, Here They Come, A Day to Remember. Our story starts with quite a few people gathering at a cenotaph. And many towns in Australia have a cenotaph like this to remember the people from their town who travelled or participated in a war. This is Caitlin. Oh, I still can't see anything, Dad, complained Will. He wondered what he was doing here. He wondered what everybody was doing here. Well, Will knew that today was about remembering war, but that seemed really strange to him. War was a sad thing. Why are we remembering that? He didn't understand why we even had wars. Here they come, here they come, said Dad. And he lifted Will onto his shoulders. Can you see them marching? Here's Will. Here's the soldiers marching in the parade. Caitlin's feet moved to the beat of the booming drum. She smiled. She glanced across at all the people who'd come to watch. And they came to thank her and the others for their service. She was so proud to be marching here today. See the big band and all the visitors. Roslyn looked at the marchers, old and young as they all took their seats. She wished that her father was still alive because that was something they shared together. They came to the Anzac March every year, ever since she was a little girl. But she didn't feel lonely, not in this crowd, because she was one of all these people who were thinking and reflecting about Anzac Day. They were all part of her community, so she wasn't sad. One of the girls spoke into the microphone. We must never forget them, she said clearly. Cole had a photo in his pocket. He didn't need to take it out. He knew every detail of that young face in that photograph, the smile and the freckles. Cole would never forget. Even though he tried to, he still had that image in his mind. But. He wondered, what's the point of remembering if we don't learn from the past? People were still going to war, brothers, just like his brother that he was remembering today. Cole felt his own medals on his chest. He closed his eyes and he too remembered. Here's Cole's brother, the one that he remembers, and he's got a photo in his pocket to remind him, because today is a day to remember. Samir tilted his head to see what was happening. He was new to Australia. He didn't know about all these traditions. Many things were strange to him, but he understood that we have to honour those who had fought for their country. He looked around at the crowd. He thought of his own family in Sudan. He wished they were here too, because in that country there was still no peace for them. To this, Samir, lost in thought, watching everybody put their wreath at the base of the cenotaph. As the sound of the bugle faded, Libby tightened her grip on Ali's fingers. The minute of silence began. This part of the ceremony was always hard. She thought about Luke. She thought about him in his uniform. Luke at the beach and Luke holding their baby girl. Libby took a deep breath. She was so proud of Luke. He loved being an army officer and he died serving his country. It was hard without him, but today she was proud of Luke.
As the crowd moved away, Rose took a close look at the memorial. The word said, the Great War. So many names. Many of the men were not much older than she was, and they were going to war. Life was so different to Rose. Her friends had school, parties, holidays. She reached out and touched one of the names. The name was Banner and the initials were AC. Who was this gentleman? She wondered where he had fought. What had he seen when he went to war? How had he felt? Who did he leave behind? She got closer to the memorial and she whispered, thank you. After the ceremony, it was time for the mates to gather. Oh, that's another Anzac day we've had, said Bert. We've done a few of them, haven't we, mate? Only two of them had made it this year, but Bert loved catching up with Stan. They shared so much when they were at Kokoda. Stories, fear, they were exhausted. There were things they had been through that no one else could understand, not even their families. But there was laughter too. Hey, what about the time when the wild pig came into your tent? Smiled Bert. I've never seen running runners run. I've never seen anyone run as fast as you did. Yeah, that'd be right, said Stan. It's a shame these old legs aren't up to that running anymore. Bert offered his old friend another biscuit. And they hoped they'd be together again next Anzac Day. because Anzac Day was a day to remember. Here we've got one of the old gentlemen. He's been to the parade. He's got his favorite photograph and it's right beside his bed. And here's that photograph here. He has enjoyed Anzac Day to remember. So people who listen to this story today, I hope you understand Anzac Day is a very, very important day on our calendar each year in Australia. It is a day to remember. I like to think that these people who gave so willingly of their time, their courage, their service, really, they gave all of their tomorrows so that we can be peaceful today, that we have the country that we love today. And we cherish that thought, not only on Anzac Day, but every day. Thank you for listening to our story today. If you're interested in some other stories, have a look and see. Maybe you've seen this story about Anzac Ted. That's one that you could look for at your library or for an e-book. And this one here called the Anzac Billy. They'd have to be my two favourites. Gorgeous picture book. So have a look and see if you can find those stories. Thank you for joining in today. Thank you, Mrs Ryan, for your beautiful telling of the story. We will now lay the wreaths on behalf of our school. Every year we remember in April and November the boats on the water carrying the brave. They had the deadly order to run through the water. It's time for you to jump, boys. You're fighting to be free. And with every year passing, our nation's so
moving on to the ode. Last post, minute silence, and the rows. After the reading of the ode, Miss Turner will play the last post. We ask that all students remain quiet for the last post and throughout the minute silence. Please remember that this is a time for respect. At the end of the minute silence, Miss Turner will play the rows. Now we shall commence the reading of the ode. They shall not grow old as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them lest we forget. Uh -huh. We ask that you stand for the choir to sing the New Zealand National Anthem and then the Australian National Anthem will follow.
We would like to thank everybody watching today and all those amazing people behind the scenes for making this possible. We would like to give another special thanks to Mr Thompson and Miss Ryan for speaking.